Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, round two of composite rocket testing. We are gonna try essentially the same recipe, actually exactly the same recipe, and we're gonna try choking down the ID of the nozzle. We're gonna try a 6.3 millimeter nozzle this time. See how that fares. So I'm gonna whip this stuff up, got a nice old uh, sour crumb bucket, and we'll uh, get some propellant going. All right, got my resins, lamp black and ammonium perchlorate, and I'm just gonna give them a good intermixitating. Good thing is it's pretty chilly in the garage here today, so we don't have to worry about the propellant curing too quick on us. And here comes the oxygen. Now despite this being labeled as 200 micron ammonium perchlorate, it, uh, it seems a little finer than the last batch we used. So I don't know if one of them was mislabeled, but uh, this seems more along the lines of what I would have expected 200 micron to look like. The other stuff seemed a little bit coarse. So that alone could have implications on our burn rate. Five minutes of aggressive mixing. Very well incorporated. My hand is cramping and I'm sweaty. Let's load this sucker. I tried using a, a pretty good dose more silicone lube this go round, so we'll see if that uh, that helps us. It seems a lot more workable than, than the last time we made it. I don't know why that would be. It's got to be the, the particle size. I, I think that batch we used last time may have been mislabeled as 200 micron. I'm going to go ahead and say we are loaded. I'm just going to burn this whole bowl in the, uh, the fire pit. Alright, to the curing chamber. In about a day we should have cured propellant. I got the uh, temp ramped up a little bit. Alright, our fresh propellant brain has been curing for some time. I always forget my damn gloves. Hopefully this one did a little better. I still tried using the silicone grease as a mold release, so I don't know how that'll work out. Not so good, apparently. Uh, it looks like this one really, really expanded quite a bit. What does I do here? So there's not much more to do than cut it. Well, that could uh, could have been worse. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Vice, get her to do a little shimmy. Oh, come on, Vice. Yeah, we're gonna have to try some proper spray-on mold releases. This uh, this propellant really sticks to shit. Well, I was struggling with that sucker for a good 45 minutes trying to get it off without damaging the grain. Finally got it. And, uh, my hands are all shaky now. But, uh, just gonna trim the ends, load her up, and let's test. Yeah, my god, the extra, extra couple days of cure time really made this stuff a lot stronger. Got sidetracked on a bunch of house projects. Never buy a fucking old house. Let me just say that much. If you've uh, <laughs> ever watched the old movie, The Money Pit, that sucker hits home. All right, got everything slathered up with the uh, newest glitter version of KY Jelly. And we got our 6.3 millimeter nozzle. Now previously, we ran the, what was this, 8.7, 8.8, something around there. Gave it a bit of a, of a venozzle plasty, tightened it up, 6.3 millimeters. So that's a pretty drastic reduction in cross-sectional area. So uh, what the hell would that be? Yeah, so just running a quick calculation there. Our cross-sectional area using the uh, 
8.8 millimeter, about 60 square millimeters. Dropping it down to a 6.3, we're, we're going to be at about half of that cross-sectional area. So we really should see a pretty good rise in chamber pressure. So just to be a little more scientitious than last time, want to get proper mass of this. Now of course there's a cardboard liner. Alright, so 46.4. I would guess that probably about 3 grams of that is the cardboard and paper liners. So, not completely on the money, but better than not getting a measurement. <laughs> so, let's load the motor up. I already got her totally anti-sneezed. And we'll just load pellet grain in. Beautiful fit. Oh yeah, Ugh, working that wrist. I think that's about as far as we go. Let me use my favorite stripper named Teeth. Ah. Oh, here she comes again. There we go. Now I'm going to put a tiny little charge of black powder in there just to ensure that we have a uh, even ignition of the grain. All right, motor is ready to rock and roll. Let's get the Arduino all set up and see how this sucker goes. Just a quick showcase of the incredible abilities of cum gutter. Oh yeah. Cleans my spindle right off when my lube fails me. Setting up and I just marinated my damn shoe and a freaking dog nugget. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Let's light this candle. Too much black powder. Burnt too quickly to ignite the grain. I'll uh, I'll go grab another e match and we will try again. Let's give her a go. That's science. Sometimes shit goes perfect and then you lose your data. That is a bummer. It's taken about four days for this test to line up correctly. Well guys, as you probably saw in the video, one awesome thing about this test, after considering the, <laughs> the loss of data, is the fact that we got shock diamonds. I mean, they're, they're pretty visible throughout the duration of the burn, but particularly visible right as the engine goes into D-cell. So if I stream forward a bit here, or depressurization, I guess it would be, you can see, uh, what is it, one, two, three, five or six of them right in this image here. Uh, can't really zoom in, but I'll put a picture somewhere over here that you guys can see a little better. But essentially what this is, uh, the nozzle is or the gases coming out of the nozzle are overexpanded. So, uh, now I had to watch a Scott Manley video to actually fully understand this, so shout out to Scott Manley, he does awesome, awesome rocket videos. And, um, but basically the, the exhaust coming out of this motor is at a lower pressure than ambient because it's getting ejected so quickly. Um, and basically what's happening here 
is the ambient pressure is pushing down in on this column of exhaust, causing a shock, a, shock, a standing shock wave to form at, a, at that point there, and then it oscillates. And of course, it, it does have to be a supersonic exhaust stream for that shock wave to occur. Now, a perfectly designed rocket motor or engine would not have uh, shock diamonds at its operating atmospheric pressure. I'm going to shut the hell up because, <laughs> frankly, I don't know this as well as other, other folks out there. If you want to know all about shock diamonds and rocket exhaust, I'm going to put a link in the description to Scott Manley's video. Excellent, excellent resource. Highly recommend you watch it if this sort of stuff interests you. If not, let's push the hell on. Uh, guys, I don't even know how to describe how bummed I am. I walked up to the laptop and I saw the data there. And as I go to use the mouse to save it, it just vanished off the serial monitor. At least we'll get to see how this looks. I mean, that, ah, that burn was beautiful. That was by far our best AP burn. And I'm going to lose sleep tonight over what that data would have shown. Looks in pretty good shape here. Smells like a proper rocket. Not that I go around sniffing rockets all day, but... <laughs> Everything looks to be in pretty good shape. Let me go wash this stuff out, give it a quick degreasing, and we'll see how the uh, the aluminum all fared, but I think it's all in good shape. I don't even really smell any residual acid. In a previous video, I, I explained how basically a byproduct of the ammonium perchlorate burning is, or decomposing, is hydrochloric acid. Let's go see how this sucker fared. Well, guys, good news, everything is in beautiful shape. Just a little bit of, uh, you know, your typical surface oxidation there. But a little acid etching, no big deal. Can't even feel it. Same thing on the, on the end plug, no problem. So we're definitely good to launch again. I just need to whip up another batch of propellant and some more E-matches since that was my last one. But... Definitely doing this test again, because uh, basically our propellant standardized right now to the first test where we made fuck all for thrust. But I want to see how that translates without changing any other variables aside from the nozzle diameter, how that translates with the same propellant. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. Click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can get, can get, not so you can get notified when I post. <laughs> and if you like the channel enough, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's how I fund all these projects. I, I love doing this stuff. So any bit of help there is truly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I will see you next time. Have a great one.